Hey, hey, how's it going everyone? In this tutorial, we're going to create this cool looking modern carousel. I must say cool looking because I created it. Okay, so what does this carousel actually do? Well, we can go through the carousel by either kicking, clicking on the arrows. It goes forward, it goes backward. It also goes through the images by going through this tab. So each tab or actually each caption is linked to an image. Now, also, if we click on one of these captions, then it's going to throw us to the specific image. So for example, if I want to go to the first image, just click on it, it's going to throw me to that image. Now this is time to move the images exactly at the same time that it moves this part. This, uh, it's a purple ball, purple ball, yep. Okay, now a couple of aesthetic things. We're also going to have a hover effect over the captions. Also, if we click on one of the captions, you will see the box is going to have a shadow, the background is going to be white, and it's going to have a, a purple border down. Okay, so we can go back and forward. We can either go here and click on the captions. We can let it auto slide. As you can see, it's auto sliding. And also, yeah, that's basically all that it does. But in the images portion, we're going to have a bit of a blur effect and also a fade in effect. I'm going to show you exactly how I did this. Also, this is responsive. So if you go to a mobile format, then it's going to look like this. Okay, so hope you're excited for the project. Let's get started with it. As always, I'm going to use Visual Studio Code as my code editor of choice. And within here, let's just create a quick file. Let's call it Modern Carousel. And I'm just going to drag and drop it into a code editor and get to start out by creating index.html. Oh, also, by the way, we're going to use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and we're also going to use Bootstrap. So, boom, there we go. Uh, let's just create a style.css. You know what? I'm going to go back to my HTML, create the boilerplate, and link up our style.css. So, link style.css file. Now, let's also create a JavaScript file. I'm going to call it main.js. And I'm going to also link this up. I don't need you. Uh, we're going to also link it up. So we're going to go over the body tag or the closing body tag. We're going to type in script and main.js. Also, the entire code will be down in the description below. So if you wish to just follow along instead of code along, then please download the code and just follow along with the video. So have fun for those of you that are just going to follow along. Now, I also want to link up Bootstrap here. So let's go to Bootstrap. Boot, not the blizzard. I don't want to play now. Uh, hey, are you excited for Diablo 2 Resurrected? Woo! September, September is the day. Okay, I just copied the city. Let me show you again. <laughs> I talked over, I, I was too excited with Diablo. So, uh, go to Bootstrap, click on Get Started, copy the CDN, and paste it in before, I would uh, rather paste it in before the CSS files. Okay, now let's go down here and let's actually get started with our skeleton. So we're going to have a general wrapper and I'm going to use a class of container, which is going to just give me a couple of margin paddings, a general spacing is going to center everything in the middle and I'm going to give it a margin from the top of five. Hit enter and we can actually close this part up. I don't need anything from there. And let's just type in a couple of comments. This is going to be the title. Uh, I'm actually going to use to do. We're going to have the title here. After the title, we're going to have a main container. What am I doing? So comment to do main container. And after that, we're going to have our carousel. So to do comment to do carousel. So if you're wondering why these are orange, if you're not using it, I'm using extension called better comments. This one right here. Okay, so just install it and can uh, either have exclamation mark for red, for red comments, uh, question mark for blue comments, star for greenish, a uh, much, uh, 
well, a greener color. <laughs> and if you tap into do, then it's going to have this orange color. Also, if you want to have um, a quick crash course on um, we just do the code, I also have one of those. So check out my, my YouTube channel on that crash course. Okay, so let's go back. And for the title, we're just going to use a h1 tag with the class of display one. So we're going to have a larger than normal display size. And these are all bootstrap classes, okay? Hey, by the way, a small plug, I just released a bootstrap course, check it out. Uh, complete bootstrap five course that is, with five projects and many more to come. Okay, so let's continue. <laughs> so we're going to use text center in order for the, so the text to be centered and we're going to give it a margin for the bottom of five. And for the text, I'm just going to type in here, modern, modern and carousel and boom. And we should have it up and running. Ah, actually, I should <laughs> need to open it up using live server. So like click, right, right click, light, live server. And there we go, there's our title. Now, very quick note, as you can see here, we have a different font and this is because I'm using pop-ins in my original project. So, hey, let me give this a title. Let's go back to HTML, type in here, modern carousel. Okay, so where I have this font, well, we're going to go to Google Fonts, Google and Fonts, and we're going to search for the font pop-ins. Okay, let's click on it, select it, and then we're going to select, you could either select all of them if you wish to use all of them. So basically this is um, the font width of 100, font width of 100, but italic and so forth and so on. So I think you get the idea. I'm only going to use 400, so I'm going to click on this, click on import, I'm going to copy the import, so whatever is between the style tags, go into our code and paste it in, mm, let's see about our style does it oh no not here sorry about that hey we need to pass it in to style.css so pass it in here now let's grab onto the body tag and within here i'm just going to copy in the font family of poppins and send serif so paste it in here so I'm not going to hit hit save this is our web page and now save and now come on Hey, what didn't you change? Uh, why didn't you? Oh, because I forgot to include the 100 font weight. Uh, sorry about that. So let's also click, let's go up here and click on 100, select style. But this is also included in this text. So I'm just going to copy the import sign again and replace it with this one. Boom, hit save. And now, yep, yeah, there we go. So this is actually a font weight of 100. Everything else, we need to specify it. Okay, so I'm going to leave now our CSS and go back to our HTML, and let's continue on with our skeleton. Next up, let's create our main container, which is going to wrap around two things. Now let's go to our, uh, just quickly going to go to our finished project. This right here is actually a grid system. And this is one column, and this is also a, a column, okay? So we're going to obtain this, Let's go, I'm going to close up everything. We don't need bootstrap, we don't need our fonts anymore. I'm just going to leave up, open those two pages. So I'm going to create the main tag. And this main tag is going to be, have the class of row. Now, because I want this to be responsive, I'm going to set row calls sm-2, and I'm going to explain it just in a couple of seconds. And row calls one and m auto. So what does this actually mean? This means that the columns will be uh, on two rows, excepting when they're on a small screen. And when they are on a small screen, they're going to be on one column, okay? And the margins are going to be auto. So that means that, uh, let me type in here, H2 with lorem ipsum, and this should be in the dead center of this right here, because this is already one column, okay? So I'm going to, if I would create another one, H3, hello, hit save, it's going to be on the next column, okay? So we already have two columns. Now, this is not the way we normally do it. We need to specify that those are columns in order for them to have uh, just a couple of more set, planning this in much more details in my course. So let's move on. It's going to create a div, which is going to be, so this is going to be our first 
column. Okay, I'm going to give it the ID of carousel. Uh, it should be low caps, a, and then the class of carousel because this is now a bootstrap class. Any class of call because this is going to be our first column. So our first column is actually the carousel or left column. Let's just say. Okay, now within here, a carousel has a inner, and in this inner, we're going to place all of our images. So I'm going to create a div with a class of carousel and inner. And this, oh, let me just show you in the finished project. Uh, I want the carousel to have rounded borders, as you can see, or rounded edges. And we can use a class called rounded and dash two, which is going to take up two RAM actually. And I also wanted to have a shadow. So I'm going to use the class of shadow. Okay. Boom. There we go. And I don't think we're going to see anything. Hey, didn't I hit save? I did not hit save. So we're not seeing anything right now because we don't have anything in it. So let's add something. Now I'm going to use Emmet and add five carousel item divs. And each of them is going to create uh, contain one image tag. So I'm going to create a class of carousel dash item. And this is going to include a image, with the class of D block, because I want the images to dis be displayed as block, and they're going to have 100% of their width. So we're not done yet, I'm going to select everything. So control shift left, and parenthesis, I'm going to multiply it by five. And you can always see Emmet is going to give me this. So if I hit enter, boom, there we go. We have five carousel items with a image placed in there. Now the images that I'm using are from Unsplash. So if you go to Unsplashed, Unsplash.com, you will find the same images. But you could also download them from the link in the description below. So I'm not going to go over each image, I'm just going to copy and paste in each and every image. So this would be the first image in the source uh, for alternative text, you could just type in dot 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 or image one or something like that. And just go through all of them. So you, you and you, and three dots. So I just clicked on options on a Mac. And it's alt on uh, a PC and you can click through all of them. Okay, so let's hit save here. And now I'm going to copy in the other images. So it's going to be very quick. So there's one of them. Uh, there's the other. There's the next one. And the fourth one. And the fifth. Now from the get go, I don't think we're going to see anything in here. Because they're still missing something I need to display them as block. Actually display them as block. Because we're using bootstrap, they are hidden. Okay, they're automatically hidden when we're using bootstrap, but I'm going to take care of it. Now we're not done yet, we still need our buttons, our arrows right here. You see these arrows. Okay, and they're outside of the inner class. So I'm going to go up here, carousel item, carousel inner. This ends here, you could actually just close it up, you know, Visual Studio Code, boom and go outside of it. I always close up code that I don't need. For example, my head. Never need my head. As soon as I have everything in there, why should I have it open? Now, right outside our carousel inner, we're going to create our buttons. So I'm just going to type in your comment. So for you to know where you are, I'm going to call this carousel controllers. Okay, so let's go down here. I'm going to create a button tag with the class of carousel control. And this is going to be previous. And this is going to include a span tag, which is going to actually give us the image of that arrow that you just saw. And this is going to have a class of carousel control and priv and icon. Okay, icon. Now I'm going to select everything and place it into parentheses and multiply it by two. And boom, we have two buttons. Let me actually push this one down here. And the second button, I'm going to select Prev, hit Control D. This is working on a Mac or a PC. Type in Next, not Next. Next. <laughs> okay, 
Now, let's see. We should already have those two. Now, because they're still displayed as hidden. Don't worry. Let's go to... <laughs> let's... Uh, Let's go to CSS and let's just do a quick carousel. So I'm just going to select this class. Uh, let me open this up in carousel inner. Alt, a class of carousel item. It's actually going to select all of the classes of carousel item. I'm going to say display as block. Okay, boom. And there we go. There they are. So as I said, Bootstrap automatically hides them. We can only see one because <laughs> now place one on top of the other. And also there's our button, the next and previous button. So we're going to comment. Let me uh, let me just leave it in. I'm going to leave it, leave it in here. Now let's go back to our carousel, our HTML. I'm going to close up our carousel div. So carousel inner and also our carousel ID. Okay, so remember, this right here is the first column. And we're going to create a second column, which is going to have our captions. So let's go underneath of this. And let's say, hey, user comment should be up here where the carousel is. And let's get another comment to do. And we're going to create here the captions. Now I'm going to place our captions into ULs and on the list. Uh, we could give it an ID of captions. And I'm also going to give it a class of list as again here list dash on styled and call because this is going to be the second column the right column now this list dot on style what this is going to do i'm going to show you just in a couple of seconds i'm going to create here let's say uh six actually we need five five list items hit enter uh let's take a look at it don't say anything if i take this class of unstyled out, hit save, you're going to see five dots. So this is uh, the equivalent of doing, selecting all of the allies and saying list style type and none, hit save, and they will be hidden. I'm going to delete it and go back to HTML. So this is basically what this does, this list on uh, list unstyled. Okay, it hides, hides those bullet points. So I'm going to delete this list items and create a couple of other list items because each of these list items is going to have a, a class of cap, it's going to be a caption, it's going to have a font size of four or even small if you want or even larger. You know what? I don't like how this looks. Our finished project. We could actually make them a bit larger. So let's make them free. So Upwards, they're going to be larger. Downwards uh, to six, they're going to be smaller. Now I'm going to give it the all around padding of three and a marginal y axis of three and a rounded, rounded, there we go, of two. Again, I'm going to select the entire thing and multiply it by five. Hit enter. And within each one of them, we're going to have a bit of a text, but I'm just going to copy and paste it in. Also, I'm going, just going to show you the very first one. Um, boom, so why within our list items, I am using a bold tag, so not this. So accelerate your ideas is between a bold tag and with premium templates is not between a bold tag, so that's basically it. So let's go to our project, hey, what are you doing? Why aren't you bold? And we're going to copy and paste. Actually, I'm going to copy and paste the rest of the text. Okay, so one here, one here, and the last two of them. So you and you also. Boom. There we go. We should have all of them now. And what I don't understand, why isn't FA... Oh, I messed up. Sorry, that's not FA. So I'm going to select all of the FAs. Actually, I'm going to select all of this FA3. Try resolve. This should be a S, so font size free. Okay, that's why this wasn't working. Okay, I'm going to take care of the rest just in a couple of seconds. Now, let's go into our CSS because we're basically done. So we're, we're done with our 
skeleton, that's all that we needed. Now we can go to our CSS and we're going to just a bit of styling. Now first of all, for the captions tag. So I'm going to say that the caption, the class of caption, so cap, cap, when we hover over it, we're going to have a cursor pointer. I'm going to change the background color to a hash of F8, F9, F9. Okay, that's going to give us a grayish color. So when I hover over one of them, the, the color is going to change, the background color. Now also when I click on it, so I'm going to use cap, class of cap, and then active, I want the border to the bottom, so border and to the bottom to have a width of two pixels. It's going to be solid. And it's going to have a color, a hash 7D2, A, E, and A. Eight. Okay, I'm also going to give it a box shadow of let's say zero, zero, ten pixels, ten pixels, and RGBA of zero for red, zero for green, zero for blue, and zero point one for the alpha, and then it should look like this. Okay, so I click on it, the background is automatically changing back to white. And it's going to have a bit of a box, uh, box shadow. Okay, now let's take a look at a finished project. And you can see this happening. So this takes four seconds. And what it does is going to give just a bit of style to, well, to our elements. Now, how did I do this? Well, actually I created another class, which I called cap active. Because the cap active class, when it exists, is going to have a couple of properties. First of all, it's going to be positioned relative. And I'm positioning this relative because I'm going to position something absolute within it. In order to position something absolute within a container, you need to position the container as relative. So it's not going to be globally absolute. So it's going to be an entire web page absolute, but it's going to be absolute, but only within its container. I'm going to change the background color to is it the same color that we had here. So I'm just going to copy this, paste it in. Now the caption active ball tag. So within the caption, with the class of caption active, the ball tag is going to have a color of the text of well, this purple color. So let's take a look at what we did. We did nothing because nothing has a clash class of active. So I'm just going to copy this class of active, go into the HTML and I'm going to add it to the very first li so paste it in here and our very first item should now have the class or the the bah, 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 the styling of a active class active caption now we're still missing that animation down here and we're going to go back to css and let's say that dot cap active i'm going to select before I'm going to place something before the element. I'm going to place a content. It's going to be empty content. It's two quotations. Now we're going to place whatever we place here. Absolute, as I said, this is why we're placing this relative. We're going to place it to the bottom with zero and to the left with zero. So it's bottom left and completely to, yeah, it's, it's completely bottom left. Okay, and we're going to create here a border to the bottom of two pixels, actually exactly as we did up here. So this border, I'm going to paste it in, and it's going to have a width of 0%. Now, how do we, we have nothing right now, how do we make it so it animates? Well, we're going to give it a, we're going to give it a border of 100%. How can we do this? I'm going to use a at keyframe. Actually, we're going to create here a animation and this animation will be created by using it at keyframe. So at keyframe, I'm going to type in here linear and let's say right. Okay, so it's going to go linear. The animation is going to be linear and it's going to go to the right. So it's going to go from width 0% to a width of 100%. Okay, so pretty simple. Now let's also include this animation. So linear right, copy it in here, that's the name. It's going to take 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5, 0.5,
seconds to execute is going to be linear and it's going to be forwards. So let's take a look. And hey, there we go. There's animation. It's going to do it once and then stop. Okay, we're not we're not going to make it infinite because we're going to add and remove this class and it will appear as if this is co continuously looping through them. Okay, so this is how it looks. It's looping through them. Continuous different. The first one, the second one, and also the image is uh, the character is also auto looping. Okay, so let's go to our CSS and well, we're basically done with our CSS for now. Uh, do, 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 do. I think we can. Yeah, let's create our captions now. Let's let's make let's make this carousel work. Okay, so let's make it first of all work, and then we're going to take care of the captions. So we, we're almost done with CSS. We're not completely done. I still have to give this a animation. So so our carousel, our images. And that is why we're going to take care now in JavaScript of the activity of those images. So let's go to JavaScript. And well, you know, you should always create variables for for your elements. But in my case, or in this case, we're not going to use these elements so often. So instead of creating a cons for, let's say, the previous and the next part, I'm just going to go like document dot query selector, and I'm going to select the class of carousel control and prev. And I'm going to say dot on click. And for those of you that are not familiar with on click it's basically the same as saying document dot add event listener and open and close parenthesis and a function and which is actually a callback function. So we're not going to use a function name, we're going to use a error function as a callback function. And we're going to say you should execute then something. Okay, I have to copy this. And also do the same thing for our next button. Now, obviously, this is going to result in an error because it doesn't do anything. It should add a slide, so plus slide, and actually the same for the other button. So let me explain this. When we're clicking on these arrows, they should move left or right. So they should add a slide because all of the slides are hidden. And they should just be added. Now, when we're clicking on the left side, we are subtracting a slide and when we click on the right side we are adding a slide so we can just do here then a minus one for subtracting a slide and a plus one or just a one for adding a slide now we need to take control of our slides so i'm going to do a we're going to select the slides so cons slides this time i am going to use cons because i'm going to use them more often and go to the documents create selector all because now we're going to select all of the classes of carousel items. Because within our carousel items is, let me just go here, within our carousel items, these are our carousel items, where are they? Where are you items in the carousel inner? These right here are our carousel items. And we need to select all of them and bring them in one at a time, depending on which direction we click. Okay, so let's go back to JavaScript. And I'm not going to use them right now, but I'm also going to select the caption. So const cap is basically the same thing that we did up here. So I'm just going to copy this one time, replace it with cap. So caption, and this is actually going to select all of the caption classes. So cap, so const cap document query select all captions. Okay, so we have a slide, we have caps. You know how to verify this console log slides, slides, and comma cap. If you execute this and open up a console, right click, inspect, and go to the console, we're going to see two nod lists, one being the slides, and the other one being the hey, this is empty. Why are you empty? Item. Sorry about that. There we go. <laughs> you see, it's always good. It's always great to 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 verify. So five elements, five carousel items. Boom, 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 boom. You see, they're selecting here the different images, and five captions. 
Okay, so we have everything selected accordingly. I'm just going to boom. Should I leave this open? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to leave the console open. So we have everything selected. I'm going to comment this one out. Now we need to make our carousel function. So I'm going to uh, create a slideshow. Now, first of all, I'm going to initiate a let and called slide index. And I'm going to set this to one. Now you saw that the slides, as I selected them, let me comment this back in. These slides are in a node list and each one of them has a index in front of them. Okay. And we can basically slide through them by calling upon their indexes. So we had one index selected and when we are going to add a slide, so plus slide, let's create this function plus slide. We're going to call upon an index. So I'm going to pla uh, place in here a const of n, a placeholder, a variable, and let's type in slideshow and let's type in show slides, which is going to just take the slides and iterate through them. So plus minus n. Okay. And this is a function. So we need to create this function and this function is actually pretty basic. We have to say that the show slides function, which is also taking in the argument of n is going to loop through the slides by using a for loop. And it's going to do different things depending on different conditions. So let's say, and let's actually initiate here a let of I just going to initiate it and use later on. So let's say if n, the index of the slide is going to pass in, is greater than the slides dot length, which is an array, so we can use dot length on it. And if this is true, then the slide index is going to be equal to one. Okay, so just as we said it here. Now, if n is less than one, then the slide index is going to be equal to slides dot length. Okay. Now let's create our for loop. So for i equals zero. And it, as long as i is less than slides dot length, now slide index slides dot length, we're going to iterate through i. So i plus plus. Now, as long as this is true, we're going to say slides. We're going to use i as an iterator and dot style dot display dot style dot display and we're going to set it to none. Now how can we display them? Because again remember I told here that the carousel items which are actually in the slides should be displayed. So I'm going to this uh, comment that out. They're hidden. Now let's go back to our JavaScript and let's say slides and it is the slides index minus one is so going to subtract one from them and then style dot display and we're going to set it as block. Okay. Now all we need to do for this to work is we need to go up here. Actually, I can also do it here. I just need to tell that the slideshow should now take in the index as a variable slides index and now there we go there are our slides and also if you click on the buttons they're also working woohoo because what this is doing this is adding a slide this is subtracting the slide adding a slide subtracting the slide so exactly as we told it up here so i hope this makes sense to you now let's take care of how can we make the slides slide automatically now i'm going to down here after us uh, show slides and let's initiate a let with time. I'm going to set 1500, just a number. Okay. This will be actual milliseconds because we're going to use a lot of set interval and timeout and so forth and so on. So let's also initiate a let carousel loop. And now let's create a function and let's call it auto loop and carousel. Open close parenthesis, open close curly bracket. Now within here, we're going to call upon this variable 
we're going to set it to a timing function. We're going to use set interval. Okay, and this needs a callback function. So open close parentheses, then a arrow function. And we're going to tell it that the plus side function that we had here, so plus slide, which is actually using the show slides and it's iterating for, through the indexes, should, well, do it on his own and just open close parentheses, add one. And this is this also needs a timer. So the set interval is going to execute this function at a specific interval. So comma, right after our curly brackets, comma, let's say time times three. And what this will do is going to multiply 1,500 milliseconds, just copy, paste it in here. So 1,500 milliseconds times three equals 4.5 seconds, okay, or 4,500 seconds, uh, milliseconds, <laughs> sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to use my variable here. This is going to multiply this and this will just, uh, hey, why aren't you working? Oh, because I didn't <laughs> initiate the function. So I could just do this and here. And now it should one, two, three, four, boom. Okay. And if we wait another 4.5 seconds and again, we can also use the, um, the arrows and this will still work. And it's also going to do it on its own. So every 4.5 seconds is going to loop through the image. Now we're not done yet because I actually want this function and this function, both of them to initiate when the windows loads. So when the page loads, so we're going to use window dot unload and we're going to set this to error function. And when the, when uh, our window is loaded, we're going to initiate you. So I'm going to take out that function and also you, this function. So both of them are going to be initiated as soon as the windows loads or the window, the browser loads. So if you take a look in here, it should, hey, it should still work. One, two, three, yes. Actually, when this hits here, it should change the slide. Perfect. Okay, so this is working nice and smoothly. How can we loop through each of this caption and create this animation? It's actually it's pretty easy. I'm going to create here a caption cycle const cap cycle, which is going to do one iteration through each and every uh, caption. And it's going to do the following. It's going to add a class. What are you doing? Add a class. And it's going to remove a class. Okay. Now, which, should, which class should it add and remove? Well, it's actually this class right here, our caption active. Because as soon as the caption is active, it's going to create this animation. And it's going to add all of the styling to, to the caption. So let's go into JavaScript again. Now we could do something like add within here because I want it to have an interval where the caption is added and it's taken out again. And this should be equal to the time it takes the automatic slider to slide. So what you could do is create two functions, one function, as you can see here, that is adding the class and one function that is then removing the class. Okay. So how should this look? Well, it looks something like this function add class is going to take in an element as an argument and a time. Okay. And we're going to use set timeout here and set timeout is going to use the time or variable of time, which is 1,500 milliseconds. And it's going to select the element, whatever element we add in here, it's going to select the class list and we're going to use the add property and we're going to add the class of cap active. Okay. Now when it's done adding, then we can remove the class of cap active, not add class, add, and you should be remove. Sorry about that. 
And at a certain time, it's going to remove the class. Okay? So let's start using these functions. Now, because the captions, as you can see here in our node list, have each of them an index, again, I'm going to select each of their indexes. So basically, I'm going to say, now this add class is waiting for an element. That element is going to come from caps. I'm going to select the first element, element zero. And to this element, the function is going to add to this class list, the class of cap active. Now in the remove section, I'm going to again select it, add and wait time free times three seconds or times dot, times uh, times times three. <laughs> Why did I name it times? Oh, damn it. So it's going to select the element again. It's going to wait this time. So within here, we're not passing in anything. Within our very first one, we're going to use um, the next iteration. And going to wait three seconds is going to remove the time. So let's hit save and let's see what happens. It's the very first element, okay? It just added the time class and, hey, why didn't you remove the time class? Uh, caps zero time free class list remove active hmm element 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 let me hit save again and hit refresh again that is extremely odd oh yeah because i sorry about that boom <laughs> so this is the second function now it goes and uh, didn't i hit save save so it adds the class and then still missing something so remove class remove class it's going to remove the element set timeout cap cycle i didn't call <laughs> i didn't call the function great job okay now it works so it's added and after a specific time caps is not defined uh caps is not defined there we go caps is defined i forgot an s here and now 100% it's still giving us an error at seven. Uh, okay, we don't need you anymore. There should be S. And now the class is gone. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so uh, this function should also load. I'm going to take it out on the windows load. So I'm going to place it in here. Uh, not in here, sorry about that. So I'm going to place it in here in the windows loads. Okay, so until now our slides are working, our auto loop is working, the class is added and removed. Let's also check this out. Uh, 4.5 and there we go, it's removed. But we need to add it now to the second element. So I'm just going to copy this paste it in here i'm going to select the second element which is number one i'm going to also keep now the element of one at times time free because now this element is waiting three seconds and then it's adding the class and then it's waiting six seconds and it's removing the class and so far and so on let me just copy and paste this for the next element and this should be now six. So, so we're just adding three seconds. Yep, three seconds. You are nine. Uh, the next one is going to be, so the fourth one is going to be nine and 12. And the last one, so the fifth one, which is going to be number four, is going to be 12 and 15. Okay, so let's see if this works. So the first element, add, remove, the second element, edit, and then removed. I'm hovering over this one. And I think you get the idea. They should work through and through. Okay, now let's make them clickable. And let's also link up the carousel to it. But actually we're not done yet. Because as you will see, when they're done, they're done. They're not adding and removing anything else. So we still need to do one more thing, and that is to create a function that's going to 
loop for the caps. It's going to continuously cap. Uh, let me just create here a let. Actually, I just could create it in here. So set interval. And I'm going to use the times. Uh, I'm going to show this just in a second. So we're going to set interval. I'm going to call upon this cap cycle function. And we're going to call upon it as soon as it ended. So I'm going to use times times 15. I should have used another variable times times 15. This is so dumb. So as soon as this ends, it's going to start again. And as soon as as soon as it ended, it's going to start again and again. And let me just show you. So it's going to end right here at the next one. And then it should start from the start because it's waiting 15 seconds. And then it's going to start cycling through it again. And this should actually be set to a cap loop variable. It's going to set it to this one, which is created up here. Let cap loop. Okay, so I want to call upon this function when the windows is loaded. So I'm going to paste it in here. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to be able to select each caption to select a. So when we're clicking on a specific caption, an image should be selected. And that is also pretty easy. We're just going to create a function. Let's call it a function cap slide. And this is also going to take in a variable, or the argument is going to use the show slides function again. And whatever is show slides. It's up here. So it's using this function again. And exactly as we did here, show slides, so I'm just going to copy this. But it's not going to add it, we're just going to set it to whatever index is going to be passed in here. Okay, so slide index is going to be equal to whatever we pass in here. So where could we add this click? Well, it's pretty easy. We're going to add it on the item itself. So we're going to take this cap slide function, go into our HTML, and exactly as you would do it in, let's say, React or Angular, we're going to go here and add a function with to the li. And let's say on click, I'm going to set it to this function, open and close. And this is going to be zero because this very first element is the index of zero or has the index of zero. Okay, so I'm going to just going to copy this once and select this, this, oh, actually, I should use option. And let's just copy this. So paste it in here, paste it in here, paste it in here, paste it in here. And just replace this with one, two, three, four. And now let's try it out. So if I click on the last one, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Okay, so this is working. This is working. All we need to do now is add that blur effect to the images. So this is pretty easy. I'm going to go back to our CSS. And again, we're going to use the animation. And we're going to call, pom, 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 should I do it up here? Actually, I could do it down here. So let's say the class of carousel and item. So we're going to select all of the carousel items. We're going to use here animation again. So let's first of all create a Carousel animation, I'm going to say at keyframe, I'm going to give it the name of fade. And what this will do is going to go from zero. You could use from, or you could use 0%. Actually, from is, I believe, deprecated. So it's no longer used, or it's not used that often, oftenly. Uh, so I'm going to set the opacity to 0 0.1. And uh, I'm going to use a blur effect. So I'm going to use filter and set the blur to let's say two pixels, and that's enough. So when the animation is at 0%, it's going to have an opacity of zero and a blur of 2%. And when it's at 100%, 
then it's going to have an opacity of one and no blur. So let's actually put it in here. It's going to take 4.5 seconds. And let's use ease. Okay, so let's check it out. Hey, why aren't you working? Uh, carousel, I spell item. So fade item, and there we go. Okay, so you just added the animation of fade to a carousel, and now it's going from a blurry image to a not so blurry image. <laughs> And yeah. Okay, so let's see. We're done with that. We're done with this. Uh, caps. Oh, wait, our set interval. I think I don't like what is happening here. This should be all in one parenthesis and this should be a comma. Okay, so now it's working. Uh, Okay, so let's take a look. It's going to loop through one, two. I'm just going to let it loop through all of them. And at the end of this loop, it should start from the start again. So we get at the fourth one and now at the fifth one. And boom, there we go. It starts from the start. So hope you enjoyed the project. And if you did, hit the thumbs up button and help the channel grow. Also, if you have any kind of questions or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Share this video. Sharing means caring. Subscribe to the channel and have a wonderful day. If you're not already having one. I'm sure you do. So with this being said, catch you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.